Hey guys, Tyler here. So, I've covered several Star Trek technologies on my channel, examining how they compare to our expectations about future tech in real life. But for a long time, a favorite request among my audience has been cloaking devices, also known as cloaking shields or invisibility screens. Cloaking devices are a form of stealth technology that uses selective bending of light and other electromagnetic energy to render starships or other objects invisible to most sensors. Cloaks have taken on various forms over the centuries, and for a period of time, the Federation considered it to be the most strategically important Romulan technology. But the question I wanted to ask today is, how plausible are cloaking devices? And why does the Federation have a ban on developing its own cloaking technology? Let's find out. Before we go any further, I'd like to take a minute to talk to you about today's sponsor, Magic Spoon. What is Magic Spoon, you ask? Why, it's nothing short of cereal reinvented. They bring you a high protein meal or treat that tastes just like you remember on those nostalgic Saturday mornings, but upgraded for the 21st century consumer. And you don't need to limit yourself to breakfast. You can enjoy Magic Spoon cereals any time of day. Cause y'all know me, I'm a night cereal guy. I loved cereal as a kid, but as I've gotten older, I've found that it just isn't as well suited for my lifestyle. With Magic Spoon, I'm able to enjoy some of my childhood favorites again. That's why I love to refuel on a busy evening with their tasty, never boring natural flavors that have, get this, zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, four to five net grams of carbs, and 140 calories in each serving. The variety pack comes in four delicious flavors, fruity, frosted, cocoa, and peanut butter. My favorite flavor has got to be the frosted, and even though it has no added sugars, it tastes really good. Magic Spoon fits a variety of lifestyles, whether you're keto, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, wheat-free, carb-conscious, etc. No artificial ingredients whatsoever. Click the link in the description to grab a variety pack and try it today. And be sure to use the promo code ORANGERIVER at checkout to get five dollars off any order or go to magicspoon.com slash orange river magic spoon is so confident in their product that it's backed with a hundred percent happiness guarantee so if you don't like it for any reason they'll refund your money no questions asked once again click the link below and use code orange river for five dollars off or go to magicspoon.com slash orange river to save five dollars today huge thanks to magic spoon for sponsoring today's video now, back to cloaking devices. Stealth technology in real life has, of course, been around for decades. With the development of modern stealth technologies to render ships invisible to radar, having begun in the late 1950s. Chronologically speaking, humanity's earliest encounter with cloaking technology is in 1986 in the Bering Sea, after the crew of the USS Enterprise takes a Klingon bird of prey back in time and decloaks it to dissuade some whalers from killing two humpback whales. But as far as post-first contact encounters, one of humanity's earliest exposures comes in April 2151, via the Suliban Cabal. In March 2152, the crew of the NX-01 figures out how to penetrate a Suliban cloaking device with the help of temporal agent Daniels. Suliban cloaking devices, which were provided to them by their mysterious 28th century benefactor, seem to use a form of particle radiation to render objects invisible. In April 2152, the Enterprise also has its first encounter with Romulan stealth technology after it enters a cloaked minefield protecting a planet claimed by the Star Empire. They use positron-based quantum beacons Daniels helped them build to penetrate the minefield, but are not able to penetrate more advanced Romulan cloaks. Anyhow, all these Starfleet experiences with cloaks in the early 2150s create a pretty big discrepancy when it comes to the continuity of the Prime timeline, especially in regard to the events of Balance of Terror, which takes place in 2266, among other episodes. Last year, I released a video about a potential episode of Enterprise's unproduced fifth season whose story would deal with and correct this particular discrepancy. You're more than welcome to check it out if you haven't already. Link in the description. Although some of it might be made moot by the timeline changes confirmed in Strange New Worlds. 
the first two episodes of Star Trek Discovery depict the battle at the Binary Stars, a violent encounter between the USS Shinzo, accompanied by 11 other Starfleet vessels, and the antique Klingon Ship of the Dead, the cloak-capable sarcophagus, who was shortly joined by more than 24 non-cloakable Klingon warships. 23rd century Klingon cloaks apparently use gravitational bending to conceal starships from sensors, providing a key tactical advantage during the ensuing Federation Klingon War of 2256 and 57. This is honestly not too hard to conceptualize, as the very real phenomenon of gravitational lensing causes light to bend around hypermassive objects like black holes. By manipulating theoretical particles called gravitons, hypothetical technologies could indeed bend light to make ships more or less invisible to sensors. According to Star Trek Prodigy, Klingon cloaks require a mineral called chimerium to function due to the crystal's sensor blocking and phaser reflecting properties. By the 2260s, as we see in the original series, despite both the Klingon and Romulan empires clearly demonstrating the feasibility of cloaking tech, the idea of practical invisibility is still only considered theoretically possible by Federation science. The basic mechanics are pretty well understood by this time, again the selective bending of light, but the power Power requirements are considered too enormous for practicality. In the episode The Enterprise Incident, Spock specifically mentions that Romulan cruisers they have encountered are of Klingon design, which led to speculations about a short-lived Klingon-Romulan alliance. In 2311, the Federation signs a peace treaty in good faith, in good faith, in good faith, with the Romulan Star Empire, the Treaty of Algeron. Under this agreement, the Federation explicitly agrees not to develop or use cloaking technology. The Bajoran Provisional Government in the 2370s also outlaws cloaking devices as mentioned in Deep Space Nine. Nonetheless, Section 31, which operates on its own without Starfleet's knowledge or consent, utilizes cloaking technology on their ships. The reason for all of this is because of a decree by Gene Roddenberry that, quote, our heroes don't sneak around, indicating it is a rather conscious decision not to develop cloaking devices. While this is perfectly in line with Roddenberry's rather utopian vision of the future, it can be argued that realistically, agreeing not to develop such a valuable stealth technology renders Starfleet at a significant tactical disadvantage compared to other species with, uh, let's say, less scrupulous morals. Indeed, in DS9, the writers had to circumvent this decree now a posthumous one given Roddenberry's death in 1991, to allow the USS Defiant to use a cloaking device during the Dominion War, having borrowed one from the Romulans in 2371 in exchange for providing intel. Intelligence, not intel processors. By the late 24th century, we see that Romulan cloaking devices had been miniaturized enough to allow individuals to render themselves invisible. But in Picard Season 3, we see that cloaking devices are still outlawed in the Federation as of 2401. Only by the 32nd century in Discovery do we see Starfleet vessels freely using cloaks, the Treaty of Algeron having been nullified by Vulcan Romulan reunification. As we learn in TOS, functionally, most cloaking devices need to be tied into a ship's deflector shield grid. When activated, the device projects a cloaking field around a vessel, selectively warping the paths of light and sensors to render a vessel invisible and undetectable. Much like a warp bubble, a shield like this can also be expanded to cloak multiple vessels. However, some models of cloaking device can work without being tied into anything, even having their own independent power supplies. Most ships cannot use their weapons or deflector shields when cloaked, with Klingon D-12 class ships, for example, being vulnerable to attacks for two seconds when their shields are automatically dropped to form a cloaking field. More advanced ships like the Riemann Scimitar of 2379 do not have this problem as it has primary and secondary shields and weapon systems. Ever since the introduction of cloaking devices, the ongoing race to improve them has been accompanied, naturally, by a race to develop new detection systems to defeat them. In addition to the NX-01's 31st century derived quantum beacons, 
because in 2256, the USS Discovery is able to analyze the correlation between a Klingon cloak's field and the background electromagnetic field to create an algorithm that exposes the enemy ship's position. In TOS, improvements in Romulan cloaking tech compel Starfleet to steal a model of it in order to study it and by the late 23rd century, energy distortions, often in the form of refracted visible light, can give away a cloaked ship when observed. In 2293, the USS Enterprise A even uses a photon torpedo to track the plasma exhaust of a cloaked ship. By the 2360s, the Federation protects its borders from cloaked Romulan incursion with a gravitic sensor net, indicating that Romulan cloaking devices, like Klingon ones, probably use some form of gravitational lensing. Geordi LaForge develops a technique called the tachyon detection grid that uses tachyon beams to expose cloaked objects. Indeed, we learn in DS9 that decloaking ships also create a buildup of tachyon particles, with some even emitting residual particles called antiprotons, antimatter equivalents of protons. In modern physics, tachyons are hypothetical particles that always travel faster than the speed of light, which of course, under the theory of relativity, violates causality. Under this understanding, tachyons would exhibit unusual properties like increasing in speed as their energy decreases and would require infinite energy to slow down to the speed of light. So far, no verifiable experimental evidence has been found for the existence of such particles. The 1967 paper by Gerald Feinberg that coined the term proposed that tachyons could be made from excitations in a quantum field with imaginary or complex mass, that is, a mathematical space that does not correspond with our real three-dimensional world. Imagine that. But in any case, it was realized that Feinberg's model did not in fact allow for superluminal speeds and would merely give rise to instabilities, not causality violations. While imaginary mass might seem troubling since there's no interpretation of it in classical physics, the mass itself is not quantized. Rather, its scalar quantum field is. Scalar fields being physical spaces that can be measured at specific points, like a temperature gradient. Another example is the Higgs field that, via the Higgs mechanism, gives mass to many particles. Admittedly, this is still based on a lot of highly theoretical frameworks, but the quantum world can be pretty surprising more so in a lot of ways than actual science fiction. Depending on its true relationship with relativity, it's what may allow for faster than light travel in the first place, or it could be what prevents faster than light travel. The jury's still out on that. I'm not gonna lie, the prospect of writing the script was pretty intimidating. Indeed, the information that I've presented in this video may not be the most comprehensive summary of what we know about cloaks in canon, but I did try to include as many interesting facts as I could. And as for the plausibility of cloaking devices, well, it honestly depends. If tachyons don't exist, which in all likelihood they probably don't, then such tachyon emissions and detection methods as we see in TNG, for instance, wouldn't happen, obviously. But frankly, the commonplace references in TNG and Enterprise to Klingon cloaks using gravitational bending strikes me as a more straightforward concept given that, again, gravitational lensing is a real phenomenon. It would take a truly specialized knowledge of manipulating gravity and EM radiation to truly render a vessel invisible, I think. But as far as making a vessel blind to sensors, hell, we've been able to do that in real life for over half a century. It's not exactly a one-to-one -one comparison, but Again, the fundamental basis for stealth technology is already there, and I think cloaks might honestly be more plausible than FTL, phasers, transporters, and replicators, although not self-sealing stem bolts. But what do you think? And do you agree with the Federation's ban on developing cloaking technology, or do you think the ban should be lifted? Let me know down below. With that, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a thumbs up down below and don't forget to share it. That stuff really helps me out. 
If you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to do that as well so you won't miss future uploads and click the bell icon to receive all notifications. If you want to support my work even further, you can become a patron at patreon.com slash orange river, link in the description, or become a YouTube member by clicking the join button on my channel page. By becoming a patron or member, you get access to awesome perks like behind the scenes photos and videos, patron and member only polls, name in the credits, merch discounts, and more. Or you can drop a one-time super thanks or PayPal donation. All are appreciated. Links to my PayPal, as well as my social media and merch store, are in the description too. Do you like cloaks? Well, I've got a great solution for y'all. Let's cloak yourselves in one of the many amazing Orange River hoodies available from my merch store. Also, big thanks to longtime patron and supporter at the $200 Federation president level, Jeremy B., for suggesting this topic. That's all I have for this week. Live long and engage the cloaking device.